you're out of order. Thank you. Hi, so were you. Johnson. Good evening. My name is Kevin Johnson. I am not a Harahan resident. I'm here to set the record straight concerning the circumstances that surrounded my resignation letter given directly to the mayor of Harahan back in February of 2016. I was hired by the mayor November 23rd, 2015. On Thursday, February 18th of 2016, I privately met with the mayor and sat across from her at the table in her office. I gave her my one page, two sentence resignation letter. She slid, slid the letter back across the table to me. I was then asked to reconsider and come back with a two page resignation letter. To comply with the request, I typed a two page letter thanking everyone by first and last name in the permit office. I also included Councilwoman Benton and thanking her. When I presented the second draft, I was advised by the mayor that the letter was still lacking in substance. I was gently urged to redo the letter and make specific references to the treatment that I received at the January 22nd, 2016 council meeting from both council ladies Hewitt and Wheeler. That's when the Hewitt and Wheeler comments were added to the letter. The Monday after March 10th, 2016 council meeting, I received an email from Mrs. Hewitt and Mrs. Wheeler asking me to meet with them to discuss the resignation letter that was read at the March 10th meeting. I agreed to meet with them both after work and I did. After we were seated at the coffee shop, they asked me directly, did you actually write the letter? It doesn't sound like it came from you. Without hesitation, I told both of them the truth. No, I actually had not written the letter. The letter was the third draft of the resignation letter. It was compiled after a closed door visit made to my office by the mayor where no one could see us. After an hour and a half, and a half long session at my computer, I was asked to step aside by the mayor so that she could finalize the contents of that letter. She made it plain to me that if I didn't sign the letter, there would be future repercussions to my oh job my future. Wow. Wow. I never intended my personal resignation letter to be read in a public forum. It was given to my boss in confidence by me. I was privately stating my intent to leave in two weeks. I didn't know or ask that my personal letter be put in public view. I thought there was such a thing as employee privacy. Thank you very much, Mr. Oh, Johnson. No, no. Mayor, Mayor, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Kevin, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Um, can I have an at? Mr. Thank Buras. you, Mr. Johnson. Mr. Mr. Burris, what do we do if we'd like this gentleman to say his last three sentences? Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Oh, Mr. Oh, Burris. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Mr. Do we Buras. have a police officer in the room? Anyone who is shouting from the chairs well, maybe, have to be leaving. Maybe that police officer should take care of you. We will have order. We will have, excuse me. Go ahead, Mr. Kevin, go. Mr. Burris, if the count, excuse me, Mr. Burris, if the meeting states three minutes. Who made the three minute rule? Does anybody want to hear what I have to say? Okay. General parliamentary procedure is that the chair controls the meeting. If there is a dispute over the ruling of the chair, some member of the legislative body can move to consider the question as to whether the chair shall be overruled, and then it's submitted to a vote. I mean, that's. I make a motion to overrule. And is the vote. Is the vote the majority or the. Yeah, the vote. The, the, All the in favor? Majority. Then make your motion. Yay. 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 Any opposed? Go ahead, Mr. Johnson. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's fine. Okay, uh, I'm, bear with me if I repeat something. I'm Go trying ahead. to. I never intended my personal resignation letter to be read in a public forum. 
It was given to my boss in confidence by me. I privately stated my intent to leave in two weeks. I didn't know or ask that my letter be put in public view. I thought there was such a thing as employee privacy. Apparently, I was wrong. Okay. Later in the same day, after I signed the letter, the mayor brought the city attorney into my office once again, closed the door. The purpose of this meeting was to reassure me that as a private citizen, criticizing elected public officials was not a problem. A few weeks ago, I mailed both Mrs. Hewitt and Mrs. Wheeler an apology letter. I left employment on March 18th of 2016. I have never lived in Harahan. I have no business ventures in Harahan. I have no family members who live in Harahan. I have absolutely nothing to gain from this whole affair. I just want the record set straight. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, Kevin Johnson, the CBO, uh, to be here. I'd like him just to come up to the podium, introduce himself, and, and speak to some of the information um, he has about uh, the ordinances, what we can do, what we can't do. Okay, good evening. <clears throat> My name is Kevin Johnson. I'd like to give you a little background about myself first. I was appointed to CBO on November 23rd. Um, born and raised in New Orleans, uh, I have a bachelor's degree in architecture from Tulane University. I got my master's degree in architecture in 2004. Uh, I happen to be certified by the International Code Council. Uh, I'm a certified building official. I also hold certifications in residential mechanical, residential plumbing, building inspector, building plan examiner. Uh, 22 years experience with the city of New Orleans, safety and permits. Eight years experience with St. Tammany's regulatory agency. So I have a total of 30 years experience in the building code uh, area. Uh, not only plan review, but inspection also. Uh, since I took over the job uh, November 23rd, I'm basically trying to get myself up to speed. I know this problem's been going on for a long time. Uh, I did schedule a meeting uh, with Pierce Wood. Susan was there. Also, uh, the Reams were there. Uh, scheduled a meeting on December 8th to address all of these issues. Uh, we met for about an hour and discussed everything that was necessary to try to correct the problems. At that time, out of fairness to Mr. Wood, I decided he needed two weeks to come up with some type of plan of action to rebuttal all of these issues. This was the first time I'm meeting with him, and once again, out of fairness to him, I didn't want to just say, well, you got to do it right now. So I, I asked them to come back in two weeks. Uh, unfortunately, the meeting never took place uh, two weeks later because I got an email from the Reams telling me that it wasn't coming. So that kind of tied my hands because I'm trying to broker this deal, but uh, I can't do it while all the parties are not at the table. So anyway, uh, getting back to the ordinance, uh, from my research, uh, the Wood Project is a non a NU zoning classification, not non urban Thatcher district, which uh, Mr. Ring already addressed, and he also addressed item number five, which was the sand extraction. One of the problems we have, I'm a regulatory director, so I deal with the 2012 International Building Code, the 2012 International Residential Code, and the zoning ordinances. Whenever I have to cite a constituent. I have to have an article to cite someone by. I can't just come out there and say, you're breaking the law. I gotta say specifically what item you're uh, abusing. The building code, the 2012 International Building Code is dealing with what's called, if you go to the intent, the built environment. The built environment is a building. In the 2012 International Building Code, it deals with mechanical, electrical, and plumbing also, which are independent codes. But the air quality in this room is governed by the mechanical system. So the mechanical system is re responsible that the air quality in a building is adequate. When you start dealing with outside air, now we're dealing with something beyond the scope of the building code. It's not a building code issue. It becomes an environmental issue. Air quality, the air quality outside the building 
is beyond the purview of the building code, which is why the EPA and the DEQ step into the picture because it's their responsibility to make sure that the air quality is positive. Once again, as a building official, I could not go to Mr. Wood and say, Mr. Wood, you're violating the building code because it's not in the building code. So therefore, we're limited in what we can do. I'm glad we have the city attorney now because it's quite difficult to try to do a job when you don't have a legal degree or, or an attorney, which of course I'm not. So I'm so excited to see him because now I have someone I can go to to make sure that I'm not overstepping my boundaries. But I do know one thing for a fact. If I'm gonna cite you, I better have an article because if I don't have an article, I'm winging it. And I'm definitely not gonna do that. I appreciate the opportunity of the mayor appointing me to this position. I take it very serious. I'm very excited about the job. I'm planning on putting my heart and soul into this. I really love what I do. I love people. I'm a people person. And I love dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And uh, so anyway, getting back to the issue. So the only real issue that I must admit that I do have to deal with, and I got Ms. Mr. Reem just addressed it, that item number five, this becomes an enforcement issue. Once again, sand extraction, provided that the necessary safeguards, listen to the terminology here, are provided to protect the surrounding areas and access roadways from obnoxious and or offensive odors, dust, light, noise, and vibration. So that's really what I have to focus my energies on. And uh, once again, I'm gonna have to let defer to Mr. Wood because he's the one that's gonna obviously have to solve any of these issues because I can't enforce with, if he doesn't handle his end of the bargain. So anyway, does anybody have any further questions at this time? I do, I'm, I'm confused, Mr. Johnson. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Johnson. Dane is, uh, Hi. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just trying to follow. You just gave us a lot of information and, and talking about building code. And then we're, we're familiar with our municipal code and then specifically 1333, right? Right. So I just, I need to clarify something because I'm trying to follow. Um, brokering a deal and needing all parties present to broker a deal. I don't, I don't follow that comment. What I meant was when I scheduled the meeting to address Mr. Woods, he was planning on coming back to us with a proposal right. on how he was gonna solve the problems. But when I got the email saying we're not coming, that killed the ability to keep the parties together. Okay, so I, di I did understand you correct then. So I'm still confused. If there is an issue in our community, it's not the Reams's responsibility to report to a meeting, right? No, if there, no. if there's an issue in the community that there's sand extraction, and we have an issue with surrounding areas and roadways with obnoxious dust, sand, noise, vibration, it's not the Reams's responsibility to come to the table to broker a deal. That's for us, I think, and I need your guidance. I'm sorry. But I would believe sorry, it would be in our. Uh, that's what I'm trying to follow. Okay, then. I'm sorry. If the Reams didn't show up, that should be irrelevant. If Mr. Wood and his company aren't providing the necessary safeguards for our community based our 1333 Section 5, that's our issue. I was trying to get that done, and they were going to come back with a proposal on how they were going to they And they should do that no matter if the Reams are present or not. That's to the city, correct? No. I was asked to coordinate a meeting between Wood and the Rings. Okay. And, and Mr. Johnson, this is all due respect. Please, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, no, but sorry. you are the the expert. And, yes, and so I, I just need your help, and I know the council probably, they need some information as well. We've met with the Rings. I've seen the book of 100, 150 uh, letters where the community has written their concerns and their issues that Mr. Reem read out tonight. I'm only and looking I, at the thermostat, okay? Oh, yeah. and I just, I just have a, a problem for our city to say because you didn't come, Mr. and Mrs. Reem, to the table to help rectify the issue, we didn't rectify the issue. I have it in the email. But I think there were other things that you were also doing uh, yeah. also, correct? Right. The whole purpose of the meeting 
was to let Mr. Wood know specifically what the problems were, and then also have him address to me via them what solutions he was going to bring to the table. Okay. And that's why he was given a two week period of time okay. in order to come back to us. Now that he knows all of these issues, what is he going to do specifically on each item? That was the purpose of rescheduling the meeting and giving him two weeks to do that. Okay. But we never got to that point. So because the reams didn't show, or they because could not come to the right. meeting, did uh, they I submit? I have the email where it's did, they, did Mr. Wood, the company, send to the city how they would rectify the issues? No, no, I haven't spoke to him, spoken to him since that, that episode. So the city just dropped the ball? No, ma'am. I'm, I'm confused. Yeah. yeah, that's well. That's a question I have. So you reached out to the Woods, right. told them this situation. They said give them two weeks, and I understand that. So for whatever reason, the meeting did not happen, and there was no follow up of a rescheduling or hey, your two weeks is up. What's your proposal? Well, one I mean, no disrespect when I say this to anyone, Mr. Johnson, and this is the first time that you and I are meeting. Um, I think it's totally unacceptable. Two weeks, you told me that there was a time you didn't hear from Woods, there was no follow up. I'm sorry, I think that's unacceptable. I was putting my energy on. And, and, I, I, and I appreciate okay. that. Thank you. But I feel like if, if we don't follow up and it's going to go on, it's going to continue like it is now. on the levy exercising on Sunday and I saw this this husband and wife walking the community with flyers and it's not to uh, cause hysteria or get everybody worked up it's trying to make sure you're aware and is this a, 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 a you know a bothersome to you do you uh, have the same issues that we are experiencing and obviously they do because they have 150 or so statements from Residents, so I want to take the, the spotlight off the reams. This isn't the reams problem, right? This is the Harry and community's yes. problem. And I want to get back to, I don't want to oversimplify it, Mr. Johnson, because I know it's not simple. But if we have an ordinance that talks about non-urban um, non bachelor district, and we go in depth to say how the city of Harrahan will control bachelor district areas, I'm still not following how it's a DEQ and an EPA. We, those agencies need to do what they do, those federal agencies, and they need to police and do their job. But I believe we have some ownership in this, and we have a law <coughs> on the books, and we need to do something about it. Okay. 